May the peace of the Lord be with you all. As we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Come, let us now listen to the Word of God. February 6, 2024 Fifth Tuesday in Ordinary Time Memorial of St. Paul Mickey and Companions, Martyrs A reading from the first book of Kings Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord, in the presence of all the assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands to heaven. He said, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you, in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping covenant and steadfast love for your servants, who walk before you with all their heart. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Even heaven, and the highest heaven cannot contain you, much less this house that I have built. Regard your servant's prayer and his plea, O Lord my God, heeding the cry and the prayer that your servant prays to you today, that your eyes may be open night and day toward this house, the place of which you said, My name shall be there, that you may heed the prayer that your servant prays toward this place. Hear the plea of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. O oh, hear in heaven your dwelling place, heed and forgive. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God! My soul longs, indeed it faints for the courts of the Lord, my heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God! Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God! Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Behold our shield, O God, look on the face of your anointed. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God! For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God! A reading from the Holy Gospel, according to Mark. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes, who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that, some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees, and all the Jews, do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market, unless they wash it, and there are also many other traditions, that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live, according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me, in vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God, and hold to human tradition. Then he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God, in order to keep your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and, whoever speaks evil of father or mother must surely die. But you say that if anyone tells father or mother, whatever support you might have had from me is korban, that is, an offering to God, then you no longer permit doing anything, for a father or mother thus making void the word of God, through your tradition that you have handed on. And you do many things like this. The Gospel of the Lord Gospel Reflection When the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them, 
Mark 7 verses 1 to 2. It seems quite clear that, Jesus' instant fame led these religious leaders to, jealousy and envy, and they wanted to find fault with him. As a result, they carefully observed Jesus and his disciples, and they noticed that, Jesus' disciples were not following the traditions of the elders. So the leaders began questioning Jesus about this fact. Jesus' response was, one of the severe criticisms of them. He quoted Isaiah, the prophet, who said, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. Jesus strongly criticized them, because their hearts were lacking true worship. The various traditions of the elders were not necessarily bad, such as, the careful ceremonial washing of one's hands before eating. But these traditions were empty, if they were not motivated by a deep faith, and love of God. The external following of human traditions, was not truly an act of divine worship, and that's what Jesus wanted for them. He wanted their hearts to be set ablaze, with a love of God, and with true divine worship. What our Lord wants of each one of us is, worship. Pure, heartfelt, sincere worship. He wants us to love God, with a deep interior devotion. He wants us to pray, to listen to Him, and to serve His holy will, with all the powers of our soul. And this is only possible, when we engage in authentic worship. As Catholics, our life of prayer and worship, is grounded in the Holy Liturgy. The liturgy incorporates many traditions and practices that reflect our faith and become a vehicle of the grace of God. And though the liturgy itself is far different from the mere tradition of the elders that Jesus was criticizing, it's useful to remind ourselves that the many liturgies of our church must move from the external actions to interior worship. Going through the notion alone is pointless. We must allow God to act on us, and within us, as we engage in the external celebration of the sacraments. Reflect, today, upon the burning desire in the heart of our Lord, to draw you into worship. Reflect upon how well, you allow yourself to be drawn into this worship, every time you attend the Holy Massachusetts seek to make your participation, not only an exterior one, but, first and foremost, an interior one. Doing so, will help ensure that, the rebuke of our Lord upon the scribes and Pharisees, does not also fall upon you. Let us pray. My Divine Lord, you and you alone, are worthy of all worship, adoration, and praise. You and you alone, deserve the worship I offer you, from the depths of my heart. Help me, and your entire church to always interiorize our exterior acts of worship, so as to give you the glory that is due your holy name. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to the readings and gospel. May God bless us all.